And welcome to Huckabee from the Fox News studios in New York City. Look, I really thought long and hard, and I was trying to find a way to take a movie that would illustrate the astonishing events of the past week. Failsafe. You remember the great classic with Henry Fonda? Well, that wouldn't work because it was about a very serious president who painfully understood the consequences of making mistakes with world power. All I know is that men are responsible. We're responsible for what happens to us. Today we had a taste of the future. Do we learn from it or do we go on the way we have? What do we do, Mr. Chairman? What do we say to the dead? And I certainly couldn't use the Harrison Ford thriller, Air Force One, about a president who personally fought off a plane full of terrorists to save his family and the world. Get off my plane. All right, well, no... None of the great films about presidents, real or fictional, were fitting to frame the events of this week and the way that President Obama and his team handled the crisis in Syria. You see, I had to reach deep into the vault to find a classic movie that worked to illustrate the kind of leadership that we've seen from the White House. A real live one. They were feared upon no one. And were considered the clumsiest desperados that ever graced the old West. Okay, maybe that would fit, okay? Well, the president preempted reruns of Here Comes Honey Boo Boo and Pawn Stars so that he could take the TV time and tell Americans that he wanted Congress to approve a plan to attack Syria that he'd already decided against doing anyway. Moreover, he pretended that the rhetorical bluff tossed out off the cuff by Secretary of State John Kerry in London about the Syrians turning over chemical weapons was in fact his master plan that he had discussed weeks earlier with Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, if you believe that, then I was the one who urged President Kennedy to boldly declare that we'd put a man on the moon within the decade, <laughs> even though I was only five years old at the time. <laughs> also, like a scene from The Twilight Zone was John Kerry saying, that if we took military action in Syria, it would be unbelievably small. Gee, I was wishing my late father had held that view of discipline when I was a kid. <laughs> I would have appreciated some unbelievably small rear blisterings instead of the ones that I ended up getting. My father practiced old-fashioned patriotism. He laid on the stripes, I saw stars. <laughs> And if the Dr. Strangelove quality of our own government's inept bungling of foreign policy wasn't bizarre enough, we had the op-ed published in the New York Times on Thursday by the Russian president. You know, I guess the New York Times ran out of old commies to write editorials. So they enlisted the services of the Reverend Vladimir Putin, pastor of the Great Church of the Holy Impostor, who preached the gospel of brotherhood and equality by first admonishing Americans to get over our heresy of exceptionalism and accept being as mediocre as our current president seems to think we are. And to invoke his most holy exhortation, the Reverend Putin appealed to our spiritual souls by closing his homily with these words. We are all different, but when we ask for the Lord's blessings, we must not forget that God created us equal. Well, praise the Lord and pass the vodka. The old KGB commie has done got a real large dose of religion, and now he sheds the atheistic foundation of his past to declare that all nations are equal, and then to ask the Lord's blessings. Well, Reverend Putin, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to sing the Hallelujah Chorus in your sanctuary this weekend, because I'm one of those apostates that, well, I don't accept all nations as the same. The ones that murder its own citizens with gas, or even bullets and bombs, are those who call for the annihilation of all Jews or Christians aren't equal for those who at least attempt to function as a nation of laws. Forgive me, Reverend Putin, but I'll keep believing America is an exceptional country and refuse to believe that it's dangerous to believe that. I think we've learned this week that the danger is when we stop believing that we are exceptional and we think that we have to call on Russia to rescue us.